Welcome to the Proverbial Life Podcast. This is a podcast that encourages Christians to look to Christ, live wisely, and leave a legacy behind for generations to follow. I'm your host, Edwin Ramirez. Look to Christ, live wisely, leave a legacy. What in the Peggy McIntosh white privilege invisible pack 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 pity pack backpack is this? <laughs> Got a little tongue twisted there. All right, y'all, what's going on? This is the proverbial life. So, for those of you who don't know, maybe you've been living under under a YouTube rock. Number one, if you have not subscribed to the channel, you need to do so. Thank you in advance. But secondly. If you have followed my channel, you know that your boy used to be woke, wokeity woke, woke, right? Woke, like Peggy McIntosh, white privilege, invisible backpack, woke, okay? Nap, nap, the backpack is the urban version of it. But uh, so, so who is Peggy McIntosh? Peggy McIntosh is a, um, I don't even know who she is. Look at that. She's she's a person who believes in white privilege, and I believe she's a psychologist. She's also a feminist, and she has a lot to say about white privilege and about unpacking white privilege. So what I want to do in this video is I want to read to you some of the, the positions she takes with regards to white privilege and what it is. Now, why is Peggy McIntosh important? Well, Peggy McIntosh is kind of like the... The grandma, right? She like your mom and them's people for white privilege. Like she's the one who kind of adopted or originated this idea, or at least popularized it. Um, and so this is called unpacking the invisible knapsack, right? There's an invisible knapsack that white people have. This inherent privilege by virtue of the color of their skin, by virtue of the melanin in their skin right um i won't read this whole thing what i will do is though i'll post this in the link below this video so that you can see uh mrs ms mcintosh's thoughts concerning women's studies as you see right here uh she talks about uh, men being privileged having man privileged or men privileged whatever however that is there's african study histories and all these kinds of things what's interesting to me actually look right here Peggy McIntosh is associate director of the uh, Wesley Wesley College Center for Research on Women. Uh, this essay is ex experted, uh, exerted from her working paper, White Privilege and Male Privilege, a personal account of coming to see correspondence through work in women's studies. She's a feminist. Okay? She's a feminist. She's racist, which we'll look at here in a moment. So you don't think I'm just levying charges against her. Um, but yeah, I want you, I want you to see this y'all. I want you to, I want you to see this. Okay. Now, number one. So she, what she does is she basically unpacks white privilege for us. And I'm just going to read a couple of them because if you look down here, let's see how many of them are, are there. This may be, oh, okay. 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 So there's 26 identifying marks of white privilege, right? And, and she knows because she's white and she's guilty of them. So she definitely knows what she's talking about as a privileged white woman. So I want us to take a look at this. I want us to see uh, what what Peggy's talking about here. And I want us to think through objectively is what she's saying true or is it false? OK, so let's look at this. Let's look at the first. Let's go back up here. Let's look at the first and read a couple of these. OK, um, let's see what she says here. Uh, let me read this comment. She says, I was taught to see racism only in individual acts of meanness, not in invisible systems conferring dominance on my group. See, uh, I, I was taught I was taught wrong. The system taught me the wrong way because the system is oppressive. The system is racist. There are people who believe these things, y'all. Right, and so this is why we, we need to deal with it here at The Proverbial Life. This is a podcast, again, that encourages Christians to live wisely, right? to, to, to look to Christ, 
live wisely, and leave a legacy behind for generations to follow. So our generations are going to be impacted by these truths. Now, thankfully, there's a bright hope for the future as the gospel conquers the minds and the hearts of individuals. But but that doesn't come without effort. That doesn't come without spiritual warfare, right? Picking up the sword of the spirit and doing combat by having these sorts of conversations with people and engaging our neighbors who believe these sorts of ideologies, right? Who believe these God-hating thoughts and, and that, are, that, that contradict the scriptures and that have a wrong view on man and have a wrong view about uh, the sinfulness of man and so on and so forth. So I divest. I, I, I'm going in the opposite direction. Let's look at the first. Let's look at this first one right here. Number one, I can, if I wish, this is white privilege. She, she, she's giving her case here. I can, if I wish, arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. Okay, so this is an evidence of her white privilege, okay? If she wanted to, she can arrange to be in the company of people of her own race most of the time. Um, excuse me, Peggy, why can't I? Why, why can't I? And, and why, why is it that, um, why, why, why is it that we have to be limited to, you know, being around our people? Like, why can't we just be around people? Right. So so her, this is an evidence of her privilege that at any time, because there's so many white people, we live in a predominantly white world. And so at any time I want to be around my people, I can arrange for that to be the problem. I can arrange for that to be the case with no problem. I can, if I wish, arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. That's ambiguous. All right. That, that has no weight. Number two, none of these do. But number two, if I should need to move i can be pretty sure of renting or purchasing housing in any uh, in an area which i can afford and in which hand in which i want to live oh my word come on pegs come on girl stop so so again there's this there's this thinking about people of color that we are just pathetic right we're just pathetic and we're we're living in the Jim Crow era, that that if you're if you're a person of color, you you really can't even move like you you can't move like you want to move, right? Uh, and then notice the language here. If I should need to move, I can be pretty sure of renting or purchasing housing in an area which I can afford and in which I want to live. Yeah, that isn't. It's, this is just stupid, right? This is just stupid. Um, now, now let me let me give a little more substance here. This, this is saying this is stupid. Um, if if I if if I should need to move, right? So she wants to get up and leave. She's saying that because of the color of her skin, she can just get up and leave if she desires to. I'm pretty sure of renting or purchasing housing. Now, th this isn't a matter of people being denied living places depending on the color of their skin what what an owner is or, or what a renter is looking for is do you have the cash right do you have the cash now they have the right to decide who they want to live in their apartment or not right it, th there there are different classes of white people and there are different classes of black people and if the owner decides or or any other race if the owner decides that they don't want to rent their apartment out to this particular class of white people or class of black people or Latino or whatever the case may be, they have the right to do so. And, and the denial of them to do so shouldn't be assumed that it's racism unless it can be proven that it is, right? So, so anyone has the ability, almost anyone, right? Unless there's, there, there's poverty involved, but anyone has the ability to move, right? Save up your money, um, make a wise decision on where you're going to go and if you can afford it and if the person who is renting out their apartment um wants you to stay there like if you're a decent person then then you'll be able to do that regardless of the color of your skin so peggy miss me with that one number three i can be pretty sure that my neighbors in such 
a location will be neutral or pleasant to me. Oh, stop. Oh, Peggy. Peggy, Peggy, Peggy. So if you're a person of color, um, you can almost bet that you're going to have conflict in your community. Now, are there racist? Of course, but that's not limited to white people. That's not limited to any group of people. It, it's a universal problem. It's called sin. And that's how it, that's, that's one of the ways in which sin manifests its ugly head is through racism or through, um, you know, again, this is the other thing, right? We can have prejudices in our hearts. We can have biases in our hearts. Those are all things that we need to repent of when needed that arise in our hearts. And depending on a person's upbringing, their background, their experiences in life, they, they may be more prone to those sorts of things um, or have, have been subject to those uh, to, to those things, right? But but all those are things that need to be worked out in real time from in, from from an individual standpoint, but not just assume that because you're a person of color that you know you're gonna have a hard time uh, going out there and, and and getting your own place and getting up and moving any way you want to move. And what's interesting to me is that the people who make these kind of statements are most of the time white liberals speaking on behalf of people of color. I like this just is mind blowing to me. It's always it's always it seems to always be these white liberals that just want to chap at the jaw and just start speaking on our behalf. And then what happens is that there's this in, in, internal um, uh, insecurity, right? Or there's this internal belief that the entire nation and the media and the world is telling us that we are oppressed, right? And because we're oppressed. People like Peggy use their privilege to speak on our behalf. And it's like, yeah, that's right. That's exactly how I feel. That's true. And it's like, no, it may be the case. But but oftentimes what is the case is that there are sorry people, right? There are sorry people who don't have no responsibility. They don't have any ethics, no morals. They don't respect people's property. And it, this isn't limited to people of color or white people. This is a sinful nature problem right this is a this is a class this is a culture this these are these are varying types of individuals in each of these uh classes and cultures and so this is an issue where we need to be honest with people we need to say listen man if you acting like a fool it doesn't matter what color your skin is right it, it, it doesn't matter what matters is are you going to respect people's property are you going to have dignity for your own, uh, for, for yourself as an individual and hold yourself with some kind of class? Or, or are you going to be a lowlife, right? Are you going to be trailer trash, right? Are you going to be uh, uh, someone, someone who, 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 who um, fulfills the, the media's prophecy of, of what people in the hood act like, right? That doesn't need to be the case. It shouldn't be the case. And we shouldn't let people who, 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 people like Peggy McIntosh speak on our behalf, right? As if, because this isn't the case for me, right? I, I, I can get up and go wherever I want to go, right? I, I can, I can know that, that I can, I, I can have good fellowship with my neighbors if they desire. I can, um, if I desire. So, so Peggy is not speaking on behalf of all black or brown people, but, but she is, right? Because she's privileged, uh, which is racist in itself. Like, what makes you privileged? Just because you're white? Um, no, no, that, that isn't what makes you privileged. No, that's, that's, that's not the case, Peggy. All right, let's look to the next one. Here we see um, number five. I can turn on the television or open to the front page of the paper to see people of my race widely represented. Again, this is all, um, these are all, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but these are fallacious statements. Now, we live in a predominantly white culture, right? We live in, America is predominantly white. Now that's changing, right? That's changing. Um, the, 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 we, we are actually increasing in, in brownness in our culture, right? In, in, in America. 
And that's that's I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, right? The, the, but but the the problem is is when you start to make these kinds of segregation statements based on the color of you know your skin, and now you put yourself on a pedestal and you you step on me, right? That that's the problem with this type of argumentation. Uh, and this really hits home for me, man, because when I was woke. I really leaned on these things and it was more of a subjective feeling, right? It was like, I, I, I can, I can agree with what Peggy's saying because I can feel it. Right. I, I can feel it. And what's interesting about that is that sometimes you can feel something because it, it was projected on you. Right. So, so you, you can, you can be certain that you feel something because you've always been taught to think that way. Right. And so so because you've always been taught to think a certain way or because you've always believed a certain ideology or a certain worldview, it's easy for you now to feel that way because it confirms how you always thought. But that doesn't mean that that's true. Right. It, 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 it may be the case that, that you have been uh, someone who's experienced racism. I, I don't doubt that. Right. If you're watching and, and, and I and I'm sorry, that's unfortunate. Um but, but when it comes to these subjective statements, uh, just because we feel something doesn't necessarily mean that these things in and of themselves are truths. So this was big for me when I was in the woke movement, man. It was it was all about feeling, right? Um, and it was confirmed by truth because it was projected onto me. So let's read a couple more here. Um, you know what's funny about this list too is I remember, I'll never forget this. I went to my brother-in-law and I said, bro, you need to read these, man. Because he's white. And I said, bro, you, you, you guilty, bro. You guilty of committing these white privileges. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's because of you, because of the scum of the earth like you. I didn't say that, but that was the thinking. It's like because of the scum of the earth like you, it's just wicked, right? It's because of people like you that I, I, can't, I can't be free. And so you need to divest yourself of your whiteness if I'm going to be free and enjoy my life. Like, can you can you do me that favor and stop exercising your white privilege? Like, just renounce it. You don't know how to do it? Renounce it. You don't know how to, Just give me stuff or give it over to me, and, and, and I'll tell you when you've renounced it enough. See, this is the kind of thinking, and it's poison. And the problem is you say, E, why are you going hard? This lady's not a believer. The problem is, is that there are believers who believe this and they bring it into the church. Do you know where I first heard about Peggy McIntosh? I heard about Peggy McIntosh on um, what's the name of that? What's the name of the podcast? Um, what's the name of the podcast? Now my brain is going to fog here. Um, uh, the the black uh, Jamir Jamar Jamar Tisby Jamar Tisby and his co-host. I forget the name of their podcast. I haven't heard them in so long. Um, but that's where I first heard about the invisible backpack. That's where I heard about the invisible backpack is on their podcast. They talked about it and they read some of these, some of these. I said, who, who's Peggy McIntosh? Okay. Somebody's finally speaking up. They, a, a white lady too. She's speaking on my behalf. Yes, Lord. All right. I was, I was a believer, but I was deceived. I, I believed that what this lady who's a feminist, who doesn't have the word of God as a final authority, who doesn't believe what thus saith the Lord. I believe what she said because it equated or it, 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 it was right. It felt right with my experience that I believe was projected onto me by, by the media, by my own internal sinful feelings, by, by, by the culture that I lived in, by the music that I listened to, so on and so forth. So, so when I went to my brother-in-law and I was like, look, bruh, let me, let me read you one, right? Let me look at number eight here. Take a look at number eight. If I want to, I can pretty uh, I can be pretty sure of finding a publisher for this piece on white privilege. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there are plenty, plenty, right, of people of color who, who, who can publish whatever they want to publish um, concerning white people being racist and, you know, systemic racism and all, all this and that. Right? There's plenty of that. So, but I went to my brother with this list and I said, bro, look, it's because of people like you 
that the world is the way it is. <laughs> and, and he and he got a little frustrated. <laughs> I could tell he got a little frustrated. But he was patient with me. And he was like, man, man boy, boy, go and get. He didn't say that, but I could tell by his face, he's like, man. He's like, there's no way I could not be guilty of, of, of things that you put up on here because, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there are things that I've done on here or things that just are the way they are. Like, I'm not doing anything to cause that to be the case. Um, but this is just interesting. When you get a chance, take a look at this list. Like I said, I'll post it in the link below. Let me read two more and just we'll close with this. This is just randomly number 13. Um, I can speak in public to a powerful male group without putting my race on trial. All right. So I can speak in public to a powerful male group without putting my race on trial. All right, let's look at let's look at 23. Why not? Uh, number 23. I can choose public accommodation without fearing that people of my race cannot get in or will be mistreated in the places I have chosen. Uh, this lady is a racist, y'all. I don't know if Peggy McIntosh is still alive. Um, but y'all, these white liberals have caused more problems than I'll get, right? They, 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 they've caused more confusion and more problems for the black and brown community. Um, it's just, it's just evil and sinful. And this is what happens again when you don't have a biblical worldview, right? When you don't have a biblical worldview and the sinfulness of man, we are all universally fallen in Adam. And we need to be born again. Peggy McIntosh needs to be born again. If you're believing these lies and you profess to be a believer like I did when I believed these lies, then you need to examine your hearts, right? The hatred and the anger and the angst that you have for your brother and your sister in the Lord, who is a different melatonin than you, who has a different mel melatonin count than you, uh, melanin count than you, melatonin is what I take at night. If 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 if, uh, if they have a different count than you and you hate them because of that, that's wicked. That's a sin that needs to be renounced and repented of, and you need to ask forgiveness, right? That, like that's what needs to happen but you you can't continue to walk in the dark and claim that you are in the light and god is gracious and god is patient as he was with me and so i pray that if you are a believer or profess to be one and you believe these statements by peggy mcintosh and others like jamal jamar tisby and um and, and some of the other woke uh, uh, uh ideologies i pray you search your heart I pray you search your heart, right? That's between you and the Lord, but I pray you search your heart. Now, if you hold to these ideologies and you're not a believer, you don't profess faith in Christ, I pray you repent. I pray you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died to take away sin. He died to destroy the works of the devil. He lived the perfect life on behalf of sinners, died a sacrificial death. He died the death we deserve to die. And on the cross, he took on our sin, all of our sin. He took on the sin of those who would trust in him. And so today, call on the name of the Lord, renounce your sin, turn away from your sin, whether it be um, racism, whether it be uh, pride, and arrogance, and envy, or whatever it is, turn away from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. He can cleanse you and make you whole. He can give you a new heart, and he will give you a new mind as you look to his word and believe what he has spoken and follow what thus saith the Lord. And so that's my cry for you. That's my plea that you would trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, y'all. I'm going to stop here. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Am I tripping or is Peggy McIntosh way, way, way off? I think I know the answer. All right, y'all. This is the Proverbial Life, a podcast where we encourage Christians to look to Christ, live wisely, and leave a legacy behind for generations to follow. Grace and peace, y'all.